thinking Sheffield United and in football history, when people say you get huge figures, uh, never was the term more aptly put then in terms of Billy Folks. Uh, signed by Sheffield United very, very early on in our history, 1894, uh, spotted playing in a, a game against Derby. Famously, our director was the first one through the door to get his signature. Uh, and it would turn out to be the biggest signature of that time, without a doubt. Sheffield United had always been designed to be a major football team, uh, playing at a major stadium and challenging to win major honours. And by merit of that, the remit of the club seemed to be to sign the very best of players available locally and further afield. So folks fitted into that really, really well. Um, it's no coincidence that by the time we'd signed folks, other great, great players were in the team, such as Ernest Needham, Harry Thicket. And without saying folks was the sort of icing on the cake, it was certainly the right thing to put a huge goalkeeper with lightning-fast reflexes into the net. It's hard to imagine players now coming from non-league virtually into league football. It seems incredible. Uh, but within 10 years of the club being born, then we won virtually every major domestic honour that there was available. Uh, we've been winners of the league championship, uh, joint winners of the first charity shield by default from uh, Corinthians, and also FA Cup winners and league runners up. And folks played a huge part in that. So a colossal figure, both in club terms, but later on in football terms as well. I think the first and foremost, people always think of folks and the name comes up the image of a showman, and quite rightly so. Uh, but the player was described to me by a descendant of a family has been six foot two, 18 stones. So it must have been quite early on in his career, but as agile as a cat. Uh, this was a big man. And you think that at one point, the entire Sheffield United defence played for its country, and the tallest player would have been about five, six. Fulks was colossal at six foot two, and Sheffield United used that to great effect. Uh, send the smallest player out first, send the tallest and biggest player out second, and the next smallest player after to really get that feeling of height. Uh, and power but uh, very very quick off his line at a time of course when goalkeepers could handle the ball outside of the area um, you read all sorts of reports of his great talents one being closing forwards down very quickly and very robustly um, what a figure to actually try and get a shot past you know the more successful the blades became the bigger he got and if you read reports and you believe and by the time certainly he played his last game for Sheffield United tipping the stone at well over 24 stones. So uh, at the side of being very, very agile, very quick thinking, and with a great footballing brain, also like trying to get the ball past the side of the house in the goal. So pretty good attributes. I think that football is about characters. Sadly, in the game these days, there are less and less of them. And I think it's like reading any good book. When you find out about footballers of yesteryear, you want the story to uh, live up to the expectations and... I was fortunate enough as a member of the football club staff to meet members of his family uh, going back in the not too distant past. Uh, you'd find his granddaughters were still alive. Now, they never knew him, but of course, the best ever evidence you get passed down is primary evidence, or as needs as you're going to get. So to actually listen to the stories of this fantastic character, a bright man as well. You know, forget the football on pitch antics. This was a man who could regularly be quoted talking about the prime minister at the time or the government, um, widely speaking out about England selectors' policies and the way in which his own football club was run. So uh, at the side of stark naked shenanigans on the pitch at FA Cup finals, the alleged breaking of crossbars and remonstration with Wednesday fans, you've got a very, very articulate and quote-merthy man. So uh, quite an interesting package. I think the feeling that you get from, again, stories and... He's certainly one of the players I would have dearly loved not only to have seen play but met. If you sum up anybody's sense of humour, we had a player at the time called Peter Boyle. Um, Boyle was a great player, a fullback, played for Ireland. His son was good enough to win an FA Cup winners medal with the Blades in 1925. But one of Folk's favourite tactics was to pick Boyle up, drape him round his sol uh, shoulders during training at Bramall Lane and go to the coach, George Waller, and tell him that it was impossible for him to train as he got a painful boil on his back. Do you think he was only cap the once for England? It's a great question and it's quite fitting that the cap took place here at his spiritual home of Bramall Lane. 
in a game that saw England beat Wales 4-0, so quite conclusive, and a clean sheet. Um, again, it's only supposition. You can only draw what you can get from the facts that are printed. But he was a man who was outspoken, he was articulate, and he was bright. The story of him start bullied naked after the FA Cup final, is that a true tale? Yeah, I've seen corroboration of it. Um, I like the story, the idea that the Blades are winning with a few minutes to go and Southampton come through blatantly offside. So far offside, apparently, that even the, the whole team just didn't let the player walk through. Slot the ball coolly past folks for the uh, the ref to give it. And, of course, there was uh, uproar and remonstrations. Final whistle, of course, it meant we got another journey back down to uh, the Crystal Palace the following week to uh, to play another cup final. Um, by the time they got him down to the dressing room, it would be fair to say he was incandescent with rage, which is a great word. Now, the story I've always been handed out was out the corner of his eye when he got him clothed off. Uh, the referee appeared at the dressing room door smiling. And to Bill, that was an affront to the great name of Sheffield United Football Club. And he decided to go and have a word with him. Now, the referee, by all accounts, like many, many in those days, wasn't the tallest of guys. In fact, I saw somebody said it was like the Charles Hawtrey referee. Great word, or great description. Folks went out to have a word with him. Now, discretion being the better part of valour, if you see six foot two of quite angry blubber lumbering towards you, I think we'd all do the same and disappear. And the story says that he came out of the tunnel at the palace like a coke out of the bottle. Uh, the thousands of fans trying to get out of the ground saw this figure enter the field of play and observe with interest to see this colossal bullet naked goalkeeper appear chasing him for a kind or quiet word. Uh, again, story says, a couple of rounds of the pitch, so he locked himself in the groundsman's shed and the police arrived to remove folks as he tried to remove the door. Uh, imagine that in a final these days or any game of football.